First thing we're going to do, we're going to take this tool out of here. I keep saying remove the tools. It takes seconds to take the tool out of there. If you put your hand across there and cut your wrist on that tool, it'll take weeks for the bastard to heal up. Make sure your both chamber holes clean. In with the drill chuck. Centre drill. Centre drill mark. Again, my me, me favourite drills, I'm going to set the cobalt from 1mm to 13mm up in halves. A friend of mine gave us them, they're absolutely brilliant. All I use them for is layers work, nothing else. Quite a bit of machine as well, but they're not used for drilling bits of wood or drilling angle iron. Right, so I want to go in here, inch and three quarters. Calibrations on this tail stuck on this layer aren't exactly the best, so what I'm going to do, I've got a, a depth gauge here. The depth gauge I got given, somebody's made it. Very simple to use, you push it in, lock that off, and we can get a, a ruler or a, a vernier. I've got more bastard rulers and I can't find one. Right, so we can just direct measurement, inch and three quarter hour want, and it's at now inch, just less an inch and a half, more than that quarter of an inch. That's inch and three quarter. Right, we need eight mil, eight mil rima. That's my eight mil rima. Take up a shank one. It's kept with a drill, some point eight mil drill. That's the, the size we're going to use for the eight mil rima. But I think we'll probably go through with a, a six or a seven first. Them, watch them chips, are horrible, nasty sharp things. The only trouble with machine and stainless steel, you do get nasty sharp bits of swarf. That's the bottom of the hole. What I'll do, I'll let that, let that cool off and I'll go and make a cup of coffee. I would have had a smoke I want now, but now it's a cup of coffee. Yeah, I'll change the position of the camera as I can. And I can get the arms in and I can clamber about without getting stuck in the friggin' thing. We'll go in with my, my 7.8mm drill. It's 
tell what's cut now it's putting the same size bit of swarf out each side that's because the drill is sharpened properly it's a brand new drill it's the bottom of the hole there you can feel it plainly it's a parallel shank reamer I thought, I had, I thought it was a taper shank one I have got a taper shank one as well bro I'm going to use this one I'm going to put some lubricant on it in case of it with WD-40 I'm going to set the lathe away slow it down gently when you're in it's important you keep back in the room and open feeling the tips off feel it cutting so you can get it out get the chippings off The reamer's going to go a nice, a nice parallel hole. Right, next thing I want to cut off to length, which is length of two inches. I could part it off, but it's just as quick to cut it off with a hacksaw. Two inches and a little bit just to face it. Important. You put a board on the bed to protect it. And if you do go through the hacksaw, so we'll go through, not a problem. Right, I won't see any of that facing off. The other guy's got a power cross feed on, but for small jam, that's still like it is, it's not, it's not worth setting it up. Lock my carriage off. Get it in with a compound slide. You can see the hole any second now. Nice light cut, good finish on it. Right, a 45 degree tool. Down for it. So I should try to slow it down a bit. Just take a big broad cut. Put my centre drill in just to open the end of the hole out. Get the rub out with a little bit of emery tape. Do it a little bit, not a big long bit, it's going to get caught and ride your hands in. Polish the edges off. Right. Right. Clean it off with a bit of, bit of brake cleaner. Yeah, people get on about Loctite, various types of Loctite. I want this bottle of Loctite for years. 
I use it for everything, screw threads, bearing fits. Of course I'm not building spaceships, nuclear submarines, basically steam engines and bits from your lathe. And I, I'll tell you how long I've had it, I served me time on British Lane cars. And we used to do loads of half shaft bearings on Morris Marinas. And the bearings used to come loose on the shafts because the tunnels were shite and we had to glue them in. And that's the stuff they give with, to glue them in with. So it must be 20 year old and it still works fine. Maybe we just want to nip that into there. All we'll do, we'll just engage our spin a lot and just give it a gentle nip in. Doesn't need to be ridiculous. So now we can machine the end of that off. I think for that we'll use probably a boring tool coming from the centre and just slowly tease it away. Boring tool is already set on centre height. What we're going to have to be careful of is we don't come out too far. So all I want to do just machine the end flat. I hope you can see what's happening there. You see a lot of the tail I'm just messing about with the messing about with the camera to see what I can do with this new setup. Used to know I can stand where the tripod used to be. I'm just using the compound, compound slate to put the cut on. I'm just gently, gently working away at it. I could have put it back in the middle machine doing this, doing this, I could have failed it. Okay, now we're sort of to the point now where I can't get any more. That looks alright. Just want to break the edge on that on that hole. Certainly be nice and slow. We just break the edge of the hole, that's all we need. Yep, quite happy with that. So the next bit will be the, the plunge out the mate to go into there. Put a bit of silver seal up. More than the collar tool, I might as well use a collet. Collets are more accurate than a chuck. See, you have more, you've got more room around them as well. You see, these are for the video camera actually. You haven't got the body of the chuck in the way. Snip it up. You can see it's running nice and true. I put a clock cage on there, but I don't need to. I know it's running. I know it's running true. I'm sure we've got enough, enough length. We've not got enough length. <laughs> right. First thing we're going to do, I, I said I'd do this, put a centre in, and then we'll turn that down to 8mm, which is the diameter of the hole. What I'll do, I, what I'll do, I'll ream, I'll ream that, I'll ream that hole to 8mm, just because I've got an 8mm reamer, 
Uh, so what I'll do, I'll convert the 8mm to Imperial because it's an Imperial lathe and I like working in thousands. And the 8mm is 3150 inches, 0.3150. 315 so. The first thing I want to do, I'm going to centre drill it. I just want a nice fine centre drill mark in here. Just a nice fine centre drill because I'm going to use a, a thin centre. A little bit of load, block it off. You don't put too much weight on it, it's got to be machine thin, it'll bend it. We'll put a, a roofing tool in first to take the thickness of this off. Power feel on it as well. Breaking the chips with the nice little bits. You are of a string bastards. Nice sort of machine so that's the do this this one pass and I think I'll speed the machine up a bit. You've probably seen us bending down to this cover plenty of things with them. Never actually seen what's in there. The lights are very good. Uh, there's a three phase motor in there and a counter shaft. A couple of sets of pulleys. We'll speed it up. It's running a bit faster, it's actually running at 850 RPM. Much, much better with water running, give it a better finish. I'm going to measure before I get too, too excited. We're looking for 3150. Look at what? For Vernia. It's actually 360. <laughs> Right, we'll put the tool in. The famous tool, the right hand knife tool. I'll speed the lane up as well. As fast as it'll go, which is 1400. It's got an inverter on, so I could, I could crank the frequency up. They run it faster, but I've, uh, I've tried not to do that. Slow our speed rate, feed rate down a bit. Nice light cut, see what sort of finish it's going to put on. That measure. Three three five. I measure with a micrometer. You see them sides at both ends. That's always a good a good start. Means the layers turn parallel. 
335. 335. And we want 3150. Basically 20 thou. We'll put a 5 thou cut on it. We should take 10 thou off it. Then we'll have a measure. That's three, two, one. And a couple of thou. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, see that make. So you're looking for is 315. And the side we've got is 315. Still, you find there's a rule that the smaller diameter of the bar, the faster, you, the faster you've got to run it together. You can finish on it, and see that surface speed on the bigger bar is faster. Put the next finish on that. Nice structure machine, so that's deal. Another measure. 315. 315. 315. It's a nice fit that I was looking for. This end gets turned down to 530 seconds. Then I'm going to thread it 4 mil. So 530 seconds is in thousand. Hundred and fifty six one five six. That's the size I'm looking for. So I want to turn I want to turn down to hundred to one five six for an inch and three quarters. Crank it. The fear it up a little bit there. That you put the better finish on, run faster again off the fenders. What's happened there, it's, it's just hit spot on with the right speed and the right feed and it's putting an amazing finish on. And that's a first, that's a first, it's like a ground finish, that's a first class finish that. It just goes to show that you experiment, you play around with different speeds, different feeds to achieve the results you want. The books will put you somewhere near. Right, we've got enough, so we want to we'll put that cut on. I'm not taking massive cuts, I'm taking 10 thou a side. The reason now you can get a finish like that, you can run the lead very, very slow with a very, very slow speed, feed rate. Well, I don't want to crank the two round a little bit and cheat because we're, we're getting the other one. You're touching my centre. We'll have a measure. A bit to go yet. We want one five six, and we've got two fifty. So that's a hundred thousand to come off. One fifty. One fifty six and a half. I 
I've took a spring cut, so I think now it'll be down to there's a slight lip on the end of there where the, I couldn't quite get in with the tool for the centre. Just carefully with the file. Just break the edge. I like it, nice, not a super tight fit, it's not what I wanted, just nice, nice sliding fit. It's actually a spring loaded, it's a spring loaded, spring loaded plunger, with some threads on the end of here. I'll be putting a 4mm thread on, I'll see what I've got. 4mm is actually uh, 1575. So on the ball part, I'll put some threads on there. I'll just put a, I'll just put a chamfer on with a, with a file. And then we'll try and get a, a die started on it. That's the ideal situation where a file is handy in the lathe. I'm left handed so I can file standing away from one to one side of it. Right handed people have a... They tend to crouch on the headstock a bit more. You're still going to be careful. Like I keep saying the most important thing is put a handle on the file. No handle on there. I mean I've got a collar chuck. But an ordinary chuck you've got no handle. And the file hits a chuck it'll shove that tang straight to your bastard hand. Without a doubt. Right, we'll have the dies out. That's one thing I do need to get. It's some decent metric dies, some small ones. This one's made by Mickey, Mickey Mouse. I tend to steer away from small stuff, but uh, some of the dreaded green stuff. I used to call it at work. No, I can't. <laughs> Much as I'd like to. Some of the Martians. Martians fluid. Aye, Martians fluid. Right. Keep it nice and square. All I want's a bit thread on here as a little a little knurled handle goes onto it. Not be the best thread in the world, but it is a 4mm thread, I'll try a nut on it. 4mm nut screws on, so that's all we need, that's fine.
see, just slot the machine in there, slit and sew in the middle of the machine, I would imagine. And I would have drilled a hole in there and put a pin through it, that'll be investing. I'll cut it off right handed so you can see. The most important thing to see here is that I keep going on about it, I think it's worth going on about. The when I was at school I used to get wrong for being left handed. If they caught you trying to write left handed they used to wrap your knuckles. Can you imagine doing that now? There's a end of this will be machined up and then there's a it gets machined to a wedge that fits into the gear and then we can harden that. It doesn't really need to be hardened but it's silver steel. I can harden it so I might as well. It's hardened by heating it up to a, a red heat. You quench it in water, that makes it fully hard, what they call glass hard. And you polish it again and you warm it up. You see the colour start to run, they're looking for like a blue colour, and then you quench it again. I used to quench it in sperm oil or whale oil. I haven't got any sperm oil or whale oil. But I've got 45 gallon of 1040 at work, so I think that might I think I might have to do. Thank <laughs> you.